Zahraman. So welcome to another uh, installment of Exploring Consciousness with the Earth Nova Hub. Thanks for being here. And we have a very wide range of subject today. We're going to talk about all sorts of things that are popping up at the moment. We've got fear showing its uh, little head popping up again, but then we've got the dragon coming at the same time, eating up the fear, you know, at the same time, we've just stopped this galactic old year started a new one, as Tanya was saying, it all started um, two days ago, to the 27th, yeah, so there is a lot going on at the moment, as usual, and, you know, I just want to congratulate the bravery of this group to come in naked and really just get on with it and see what evolves and there's actually something as i'm saying this we we always talk about imagination you know the dragons and the dreams and everything that is coming in at the moment and the fear that comes with it is is becoming more and more important in the next couple of years because we're starting to understand that we are actually we always know that we are conduits for spirit right but we are now starting to really sort of understand what that actually means as having a body that is confined in or by certain parameters spirit can come through now with imagination, the invitation here is now, this is where the dragons come in and help us, uh, is that we're starting to create new parameters through our imagination, what we want to create so that spirit can then use those new creations that we literally make up and then they can come through. So we are creating vessels through spirit to come through. And this is why we're just talking a little bit about, you know, um, stranger things and, and watching, you know, dragon movies and all sorts of things. It's really that important to acknowledge that we are the creators. We are the universal creators. It is our imagination. And then once we start creating these things, there will be other energies that are coming through and support it but it is our signature frequency that sets the parameters. And that is interesting. So what does it tell us when Tanya dreams about dragons? What does that tell us about Tanya's signature frequency? Very creative. To me, I, I might say that I would connect that with um, awakening more ancient DNA, uh, maybe opening up uh, a better conduit between her and that larger ancient presence of herself. And, um, you know, it's like me, I see dragons everywhere. I don't know unless if I dream about them, but you know, I'll see them in the clouds and I get messages and, you know, uh, the, the year of Andrew's event, it was weird because green dragonflies were visiting me like for two years solids. And I always equated that with the mini version version of dragons. But right now, just to put it out there, I think it's, I think it's connecting to a, a more sacred part of ourself, a bigger, more cosmic size of ourselves, you know, so... That's how I'm going to throw it in there, just to start okay. it up. So how are we going to use that? How, you, how do you use it, Tanya? How do you use your dragon energy that's coming through in the dream? Um, so for me, it's really creational energy. And when we talk about, you, you know, the Mayan calendar and like the start of the Mayan year, the, the, first, the first glyph is the dragon. And so it's this almost like really, I don't know, creational, creational energy, the, the energy coming from the East, that energy of new beginnings, right? And I think there's a lot of space 
you know, that I hold for people's like energy clearing, but also starting, starting fresh, right from that soul perspective. Yeah. Um, it was almost like a, a dance, right? When they come in the dreams and in that space, like almost between waking and sleeping, they make their presence really, really known to me sometimes. And I, I call on them in my dream time invocation for, for help and for guidance and for messages. And, um, and I've been working with dragons since the first time I ever met a dragon was 20 summer solstice of 2012. I was up in Mount Shasta and I was sitting not on the mountain, but uh, well on the mountain because it's all the mountain, <laughs> but I had a great view and I was just sitting and meditating and my spirit team came in and said, okay, just get really grounded. And uh, all of a sudden I had this awareness of a white dragon and all of a sudden like the mountain like seemed to shift like click, 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 click. And then a giant dragon flew out and I was like, wow, <laughs> that's cool. And so after that, I started having awareness of myself, um, like having a dragon companion and, and like my higher dimensional self, like riding, being a dragon rider and uh, wor working with that, working with that energy. So I think, um, you know, working with these energies for the last 10 years has really ab enabled me to open up to that creative flow of the unseen and acknowledging that that these beings do have a presence with, with us right and they're they're teachers and they're healers and they can they can fly and they can swim and they can get really big and they can get really small and and it's just a really really amazing i think journey in acknowledging that have you used them for, for any particular uh, creation, anything tangible that you said, okay, guys, I want to, I'm just saying, write a book now. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you help me with that? Not yet. Um, usually it's for deconstruction. Mm -hmm. So as the old operating system of earth is being deconstructed and there's a lot of energetic bindings be it on sacred sites or you know in in different places i found my dragon will assist me to help you know free a lot of bound dragons mm -hmm. so you know one of the things that i've noticed in the earth work that that i do is a lot of earth elemental creatures whether they be like giant serpents like the one at, at, that hangs around a, a serpent mound um, or dragons uh, will will have been energetically bound by dark magic to harness their their creational elemental energy and so I've, I've uh, done a lot of unbinding and freeing of the dragon dragon people who were trapped and whether it's you know, just kind of like by the dark magic or by the changes of earth, you know, there's different, different reasons. Yeah. Fantastic. So using the dragon energy for healing, basically mm -hmm. asking them to assist in the, in, in the healing and unbinding. And, and that would also, they probably would help us with fear as well, because we were just saying that there's a lot of fear coming out now. Now, Let's look at that fear. What, Martina, before you move on to fear, can I ask Tanya a question, please? Please do. Um, Tanya, you mentioned the serpent now, here just now, and uh, you're saying the giant serpent that like, hangs around the serpent mouth. Um, what do you mean by that? Because I I'd visited the Serpent Mound. Yeah, so um, when I was there, I saw a giant red, red serpent who was like etherically uh, underneath those energies in the water, in the water systems underneath. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, so the day that I was there, it was raining really hard. It was pouring rain <laughs> while we were walking around with umbrella um, just to get a, you know, a, a circle around of the, uh, the giant serpent there. Um, so I was, as you were saying that, I was trying to see if there, to make a connection of some sort. So I've never heard anyone say that there's a serpent um, hanging around there. So that's why I was kind of questioning you on that. Yeah, and that was almost like a giant ancient, ancient earth elemental snake. Yeah, because yeah. I I do remember Andrew talking about the serpent mound once. Um, yeah, and he and talked he about I think the the native Native Americans and the way they built the mounds with iron mm -hmm. and uh, the way they would drum. And yeah. so I was there for a gathering of the Star Knowledge conference with a Native American chief, Golden Light Eagle, who's now since transitioned to the other side of things. Mm -hmm. And so we well, always mentioned him and he's like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so there was a lot of like ceremony and drumming and dancing that was done right on that. On so that maybe he, ha he has something to say to you. That's why he answered you so fast or say hello so fast about the serpent mom. Does he have a message? For us and well he's just talking about grounding right grounding and connecting with mm -hmm. earth mother yeah okay. that it's important but um he he also did uh he wrote a book three books the 11 11 teachings the 12 12 teachings and the 13 13 teachings which are based on the symbols uh, of universal law that were brought to his, his people by uh, the star people. What's, it, what's his name again? Chief Golden Light Eagle. And if you, I think the website is starknowledge.com. Okay. And there's uh, one lady, um, Jen Barry Hill, who has kind of like continued those teachings since he passed away. So, and her her YouTube is Moons of Ascension. Yeah. So that's a those are good good conversations. Um, she and also my friend Melanie and a couple other people have conversations like we do here about what's going on with the energetics now. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Martina, you can take over now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what my my idea was. That's what you, were talking about, you were talking about fear. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So we've got a couple of therapists here and, and obviously healers and that sort of thing. So it's a, it's, a, it's a question to Sean because you're working with people. Do you, do you work with people already or are you still studying? Yeah, you work. Yes, yeah, it's pretty cool. Of, yeah. So do you sense that the fear has changed? It depends. Because like the first thing I've picked up on being a practitioner is you just bring in so many patients that are going to be teachers to yourself. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of bring in what you need. And so it depends on practitioner to practitioner who you end up in your, like, working on. Mm -hmm. So it's like sometimes there might be some fear if I need to work on my fear or if I need to work on any specific little thing. So it's kind of on, like, a person's perspective by perspective and truth by truth basis. So how has the fear changed in your truth basis on the basis of your truth? I'm uh, just trying to look at it. Huh? Trying trying to look at it and just not be overwhelmed by it and accept it and roll with it and kind of transmute it. Like how, how can I use my fear to propel me to do whatever actions I want to do, but not be completely engulfed by the fear? So like let it be part of human nature because it's a emotion among all the other ones, which can be helpful. Like because a lot of time it can actually be telling us, hey, you're going into a bad situation 
And as long as you just don't let that resonate and echo and echo and repeat itself over and over, that can just steer you into a whole nether kind of situation, it can be pretty helpful. So like for me right now, I can, I can see a lot of fear that's happening because there's this great changes happening. It's just constantly just rolling. And like, is this more and more, especially with like a, the political and economy, it's like, oh, 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 the wheels, the wheels are really grinding and spinning right now. So there's a lot of apprehension, but uh, here we go. I like to me, it's, I find it kind of exciting. Because like I've come to terms with that sense of fear because I feel grounded in that area. Well, I, I think too, you know, we, we've, we've all, right, listened to, to AB's materials and have an understanding of the way the global narrative tries to trigger us and control us, right? So with that in mind, you know, I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of people, clients, female clients in particular coming in and just totally afraid and freaked out at the most recent Supreme Court decision. And so it's like, okay, well, is that affecting you now? First of all, you know, I'm in California, so no, it's not affecting anyone in California, but um, there's, there's a deep, a deep fear, you know, among women that rights are being taken away. But I mean, it's, it's, it's much, it's much deeper than that. And, you know, with this deconstruction of this old operating system earth, things, like you said, the wheels are falling off the cart, <laughs> the wheels, the wheels yeah. are, are grinding. And so there's so, so much that, that is trying to also pull us out of our own center, pull us out of our own sense of groundedness. Yeah. You know, and a pull lot us of, out like... of doing our own work. Yeah, like those more local bubbles of reality are just popping up. And then we have to just become used to not being attached to that giant domination and control bubble. Like, can you be, you know, because it can be scary to step out of domination and control. So that means you got to start being responsible for your own actions and thoughts and intentions. And you've got to do everything. Like, if you're not like if you're creating for yourself like if you're not being created for you got to create for yourself and that can require a lot of energy and attention yada 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 well it can be a, a scary thing to step into too if you're not if you're not familiar with with doing it right if you've lived your life in a certain way your whole life right like what does it mean to be a human what did your parents teach you what did the narrative teach you and and that shows up as a physical energetic structure around the aura that feeds information into into the energy body so i just remember you know i've been doing reiki for 22 years now and worked in tech for for a lot of that time and i've been you know doing doing my own business for the last 10 and when I first left my tech job, right, the golden handcuffs, <laughs> I, I thought, oh gosh, it would just be so much easier to have someone tell me what to do rather than do my own thing, right? To have to create, right, my business and, and understand what that is and attract clients and it would be just easier if I could go to work and be paid, but that wasn't in alignment with me anymore, so. There was a transition that happened there for sure. Yeah, I, I, I love looking at everything through the, like the anatomical point of view and just like how much energy it takes to bring things out of the autotomic nervous system and kind of bringing it into the intentional part where we're actually focusing on and how much energy it actually takes to take something that wasn't in your paradigm before and pull it in and to be able to focus on it. Cause that, that's what dreaming is, that's what living is, is just to being able to focus on a subject matter for long enough time for it to feel real, but just how much energy it takes to focus on things and just to take just something little out of your autonomic system, your programs and being in control of it now, takes, takes a lot of energy to be stored up. And sometimes we just 
run out and we go back to the programs, but we always come back and forth. As soon as we have enough energy again, we just pick up where we left off. Start so, rocking and rolling again. I really love you guys having this dialogue here. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Now, I just had an idea now. Now, and luckily, as if by magic, there was a box right next to me. <laughs> What's in the box? The box. It's a little box. Now, we are energy beings, right? Unlimited energy beings. And uh, Sean, you're talking about the effort that it takes to expand. Now I'm gonna, let's look at this. Okay, there's a saying anyway, which is so super cool, an old access tool. Everything is the opposite of what it appears to be and nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. Everything is the opposite of what it appears to be and nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. So when we go into conclusion of any kind, a point of view, then run that because that loosens up that energy. So we're going to use a metaphorical thing now. So we are vast energy beings, right? Now, we were saying early on, we have created our bodies as parameters to have that spirit come through our soul essence, which is equals to spirit, which is defined because our soul essence is defined over our you know, millions of lifetimes that we had. And then we're going to channel it into this tiny, tiny, tiny little box. Now, how much energy does it take to channel it, contain it within the parameters that we put out? Now, every point of view that we have is a parameter. Every, our belief system, our values, our thoughts, these are all restrictions that allow us to create this box for us that identity that we call it, that's the box of identity. Now, what if we say everything is the opposite of what it appears to be and we say, hey, it takes so much energy to channel our vastness into that tiny little fucking box. Now, what if we open up the box and we can just like a genie, woo, open everything up here and go big again. Now we let the perspectives in. The new perspectives, right? Everything's falling apart. Okay, I'm expanded. It's okay, because I don't care. I'm out the box. So everything can just go straight through us because we're no longer confined by the little box, by the parameters that we have set ourselves to be, be that entity that we call human. So we are no longer humans. Of course, we're humans, but we are expanding as humans. So if we take the box, we open the box doesn't that okay so look at this is it an effort for you to open a box no well it does because we were talking comfort there's a lot of comfort in that box because we're so used to it we've done it for millions of fucking years right and now we're gonna let the genie out well it feels a bit ungrounded that's why tanya says we gotta ground how do we ground the genie right how do we ground the genie how do we expand those parameters that we have set ourselves as human beings and still function in a reality that does require parameters, that does require rules? Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't like them, but yeah, we do need them. It's just the definition now. So the fear, and this is why, you know, when we talk about fear, it's like I'm not feeling it. But of course, as, as Sean says, we, we have to speak from our own perspective. Now, I'm not feeling the fear anymore. Why do I not feel the fear? Because I'm super fucking comfortable. For me, it, it's I have to work getting in the box occasionally. Yeah, because I don't know what that feels like even. But I had no idea. I had no idea that I was that I've been living my life like this. That was just through exploration. I realized that that's what I'm actually doing. So I'm, I'm working on getting back in the box and see what that feels like. Nice. Outside the box is like, some are more comfortable with that, but the fear element is different because we can't call it fear at that level. The fear is defined in the box. Fear is in the box. So when you open it up and the genie comes out, it's no longer fear, it's something else. And somebody said the word. And there will be more than just one word. John, you said the word. 
And that is very often misidentified. The fear is very often misidentified with excitement. Because the feeling is the same. We feel it in the heart. We feel it in the gut where we normally feel the fear too. But what if the fear that we are now feeling is no longer the fear, the little fucking fear that's in the box that we've known forever. It's a different fear now. It's like excitement or whatever else you want to call it. Yeah, call it ungroundedness for that matter. But it's no longer fear, is it? Mm. That's the fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we should take time to appreciate the box. Because the box is everything that we've put together it's kind of like the solidity of us and our ideas. It's our, it's our ego. It's who we become. But then we open the box up and we let a, like extra sensory perceptions come in, new ideas. But with that, it kind of loosens us from the ground. You know, if we get too far out, we might not be able to get back into a box. We might not be able to contain those new ideas and thoughts and still be able to participate in what we thought the world was. Okay. okay. John, that's yes. perfect because, um, you know, uh, like Tanya, I, I first got my first attunement to do Reiki in 86. And then I became a master in 97 and taught. And so almost my whole adult career has been teaching or counseling because I'm a minister too. And the last few years, I haven't been doing any of those things because of where I came and what my situation is. But Martina, with your box description and Sean, from what you're saying when we take that away, that I love it because that's what I've been kind of like going like this with lately because I see the fears and then I realize how I can deal with it myself. And of course, people who are on the same page or dealing with the same things come to us at the time that because it's kind of a co co um, resonance, you know, you're, you're both resonating at the same frequency. So you kind of pull each other together to work on the same thing. So my thing, and I'm glad you said it because it finally like, huh, it's like I've been out of that box and trying to figure out, sorry for the language, where the hell do I think fit in these days? What do I do now? Where are my parameters? What, what am I supposed to be giving and sharing with the world? Because I mean, people in Florida would call me before they had surgeries to do sessions on them, just feelings. You know, people would call me on the phone for counseling. I mean, I was busy all the time. And like the last, you know, it's like little and little and less and less and less of, of that old box is there. And I've been trying to, and without saying it to people on Facebook and stuff, I've been trying to say, can you give me some reflection back? Can you tell me what you're seeing? Maybe you can give me some guidelines, but it, it's kind of weird to be out there and and, and I, I like that. I, it feels like I don't have parameters to work from anymore. And I don't, it's like, I almost like have lost my identity of who I am. And so I kind of like keep stepping back from things because I feel like I don't fit with any of the groups anymore. And it's kind of fabulous. You know, kind of, fabulous. Uh, with words, can you say what you are? Can I say what I am? Yeah. Um, like. Like, go ahead, finish what you're saying. Oh, you just, just like, just something for everyone to think of. Like, with words, can you describe what you are? And then, because um, start with that. Okay, I would say that I'm um, uh, an artistically, musically giving based person. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because my idea of what I'm presenting here is. Um, like right now I identify as a student and a practitioner and it's like kind of more with my profession, but then, so we build that and that becomes our box and then we open it and ooh, where did that thread go? Um, Let me grab it. Let me grab it. Can I grab, grab it? Grab it, Martina. I'm, I'm going to grab this thread now. Yeah? Where did the box go? Mwah. Where did the box go? Thank you, Robin. You just really actually really explained what people are going through. The fear that is associated with loss of identity. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Where, hold, hold, hold on. Otherwise, I lose my box. Otherwise, box. Where did the box go? Now, box is tiny, right? Genie is big. Box changes and goes. Mm. At the heart. 
and of course as if by magic is right here on my fucking desk right <laughs> comes heart now essence everything that we've learned everything the parameters la 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 heart now we're changing the box is inside of us now chini is outside right all the parameters, the identity, the new ones, the old ones, it's always there, but it's no longer defining us because it's here. It's a seat. Now we are around it, which very much suits us because that's, this is what grounds us. So the box is no longer the restriction. The box becomes the grounding. Yeah. And it's inside. And when it's inside and we are outside as the soul essence, which actually is the case because we are not in our bodies, the body is within us as the soul essence, yeah? Mm -hmm. Then there is no limitation in any fucking parameter that you set. I like that better. My, my box will change every day. My box mm -hmm. will change with my mood and how I, how I perceive each day starting over. Mm -hmm. it's like how much it can open up and change and open up and in change and just seeing that it's kind of like our pram like the box being like a dream it's kind of like our parameters and framework it's the mold and it's kind of, it's really helpful to have that mold because you have something to work with every day and you can change it you open up you change it you allow new cool things to come in and you keep changing that mold just constantly because you want to have that experience that mold is that particular experience that we want to contain, have some sort of linearity with, because it's that's kind of what we're doing mm -hmm. while doing multidimensionality, but just having that linear experience simultaneously. Absolutely. And, and the box has lost its purpose. That's why the box has the, it's the box that has lost its identity, not you, because the soul itself never had a fucking identity in the first place. That's not true because we do have a soul essence. Our yeah. soul monad has a certain, you know, lineage purpose. Yes, we do know that, but it's never as small defined as we do it when we think we're humans, right? So we can actually lose the jargon. We can lose the metaphor of the box now, right? And we just, Call it a heart now and put it in there. And even that would be a limiting. But for this purpose, we just play with that. And then everything around it can just go. You can have a thousand different identities, which you anyway had. As you say, you are the artist, you're the musician, you're the mother, you are uh, the, the, the daughter. You know, you're all of that. We are all of that and more. Mm hmm and, and see like the uh like the the body and the eyes the ears the mouth the nose the senses coming in the senses coming out and they can be blocked off and then everything's stuck inside and you don't have that extra sensory so they're gateways and doorways and they can be blocked off and we can be completely inside and detached from out here or when these things open up we can have access to all all this out there to bring it in just to have that constant doorway between the inside and the outside well perfectly explained here now because you see the thing is the soul essence will never fit in the parameters that's why we have all these fractured charts everywhere even if we talk about soul shard integration it's not that we're sticking everything inside this skin it's not gonna it doesn't work like that but we are starting to connect to that remote soul that ha is not even in this reality and we are creating a better connection so the, it's a completely different energy it's not that we're st stuffing a turkey yeah You're not sticking the soul shots up your ass right that's not yeah. how it works <laughs> yeah. getting rid of the creating a much better connection and yes it happens and that gives you the expansive feeling. So when you work with somebody who's got an en uh, fear energy, okay, relax, breathe, bury us down, expand out. There's no fear. It's gone. It's like this, gone. Just a pers different perspective, different pers uh, perception. Job done. What else you got? That's it. Okay, pay me. Pay, pay me <laughs> first. You got to act now. <laughs> Get the people always to pay you first if you still have clients. Yeah. 
because you're gonna get so fast with your stuff now that you know after 15 minutes you're done you just gotta oh, okay tell them a story because you know what else you're gonna do you're getting so much more effective in this new world and it's the same with uh, what what jen you know the story she's telling us you know what's happening in her work environment people all of a sudden you know remember the the, the picture story with the owl it's like oh you know conversations you've never had before you're having it's like okay because everything is expanding and that's exciting and yes it can be perceived as fear but what if it's actually not I think one of the great points that you just made, Martina, is only within a second, something within us can connect, change, rearrange, and it from that point, you feel a totally different uh, energy field around you. You, you. you know, your consciousness kind of steps in a different realm, and, and it's instantaneous when it happens. And just here within this broadcast, I mean, already twice now, I'd like... Oh, oh, that feels so much better, you know. So, bravo! It's this is a great, great Zoom today, guys. Thanks. Yeah, I just keep thinking of that line from The Matrix when Keanu is trying to bend the spoon, mm -hmm. and the and the little little person says, "There is no spoon." Well, I say the same thing about the box, right? There is no box, and if you look at it from that perspective, then you're just bending yourself. Ah, oh, the paradox. Because <laughs> I love being here. I want to be here. I am here, but I'm not here. I'm everywhere. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It's like oh. I was just like uh, speaking to my uh, ex uh, sister in law who is who is here at the moment, and we were talking. We went to the Freud Museum today, Sigmund Freud. I, I must tell you, it was actually a very interesting experience. <laughs> But having said that, we're talking about bilocation and we're talking about expanding your view and everything, you know, and I gave, I gave her the, the you know, because bilocation, oh, we can't do this, right? We don't know how to bilocate. And then I had to use Abe's example. He's, he's, he's once given uh, me or us where he said, every time you go over a speed hump, you bilocate. You're in two different places at the same time because you're, in front of the speed bump, knowing that you're going to go over. So there's you there. And then you know where you want to go on the other side. So you've already bilocated over there. So every time you have a destination of something that you want to get to, you are bilocating. You're a time traveler, you're bilocated. You're, there is not even a discussion about that. Yeah, and using your millions of experiences to get there. Billions, trillions, infinite, limit, limitless experiences. And, you know, we, we're having this thing about thought, got to get rid of thought and got to do all this like meditation and transcendental and stuff like that. Thoughts are our time traveling companions. Yeah, we travel with thought. The body doesn't go anywhere. Body sits here. Yeah. But the mind, the mind, we want to get rid of the mind. We mustn't get rid of the mind. The mind is potent and powerful. It's our tool. The brain takes all the information in and just interprets it. But the mind is the power, the potency that we have. And of course, it's all connected in the signature and the vibration and all of that. But without the mind, without the ego, we can't create shit because that, the mind, the ego helps us to put the parameters together so that, again, as we said earlier on, you know, if you want to create a new, like Jen, if she wants to create a new painting, then, you know, she's got to have an idea. She's got to have a thought about it in some way. And then she tries to get rid of the thought to, to allow everything else to come in and that kind of, but she needs paint. She needs a, 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 a paper, whatever you call this, to put to paint on. Canvas. Canvas, yes. So, you know, you're going to need all of that because we are living in a real world that at least that appears real and it's super fucking tangibly real for us. And that is the magic about the experience. And this is where we serve the planet, where we serve the universe by allowing ourselves to have experiences 
And spirit itself doesn't give a shit if it's a crying or a laughing or, or you know, that kind of thing. It just wants to have an experience. The soul wants to have an experience. So if we're here and we're like, oh, we can't do this, or don't income for that, discount for this, the soul is bored. What are you doing? Get on with it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> can I share, can I share something hey. while you were talking about um, imagination before? Mm -hmm. Okay. So after the last show about your galaxy that you want to create oh, well, and the garden of light, the garden, I forget what we called it, garden of life. So the, I have to say I, I drew, so I did some drawings of our garden. Now this just comes out of my, I didn't even have a thought, you know, so I drew these right after the show. And then I'm, I kept thinking about it. I kept thinking about the galaxy. And I, so I added those, they're already there. And then last night I just was drawing and I did all this little drawings of some more for our garden. <laughs> and I don't know, sun, I don't know. That could be a planet, who knows? So it's like that imagination. I mean, I love imagination. I love to use my imagination and just create things out of I don't know like those heads you had out of nails like little things around the house that you find that you throw it away it's like I have this box of things that I don't even throw away because I'm like I could do something with that so I don't know so I, I need to use this now so what um, Amy just showed us now it's like with any painting, with anything that we create, any food that we create, any, you know, any, anything, if we need something, any, anything where we are creative, where we're using our drag and energy, because that was, that is what creation is, the drag and the life force, that is what the dragon energy is. We're creating a container. So every painting that you paint, every drawing that you make creates a container. Now you got to look at this painting and say, okay, Let's be the magician here. You've been the mystery person. Okay, so there's a difference. I read this the other day, which is a very nice uh, little distinction to make. Are you, a, okay, there's too much coming in now. So let me talk about mysticism and, and magician later. So magician. Amy's just been the, the mystic who allow, she allowed herself to have a visualization and now she put it into an experience. Now it's on paper. Now, it, now it's on paper. It's like we're using our voice to create. We're using our hands to create. Now it's on paper. Now it's got the parameters. The parameters, look, it looks like a flower. It looks like this, yeah? Now the magician can come in where she sits with that piece of paper. There's a little bit of a ceremony, yeah? And invites the spirit to come in to fill the parameter that you have created. This is being a creator being. Mm. And the difference between, uh, and then see what's gonna happen. She might go out, take a walk around the corner and there is exactly that fucking flower that she painted the wicked. I said, what the hell are you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. true. That, that's the magic now who created that magic amy created it because she created that container yeah oh i love when, that once yeah. you put it on that paper you made it your idea a signature frequency real. match for this tangible dream reality you put your idea to match it so now it's part of the same vibration yes wow i love that and and when you were showing your diagram and your drawing, Amy, and you had the sun, and then you said, you know, I'm not sure about this one, but what I heard personally for me was that it was like the 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 galactic central sun and the universal central sun, and that you were tapping up. So I'm just throwing that in there. Yeah. So so when we talk about being the creator of our reality, that's it. That's a very simple example. That's it. That's in the creator. That's what we do. We create a parameter and then we fill it up with spirit. We bring the spirit in. Now, the, the, the magician does exactly that. The magician does it, doesn't sit back and just say, okay, 
visualization, la la la, coming in, coming in. The magician has a much more, has a different mastery and determination behind it because they are actually, they will have a little revocation or a spell, whatever they call it, or they will make a, a fire and they will have a little circle, you know, and stuff like that to invite it in. And, the, and they're not doing the, 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 the spell once, they do it like every day in order for that. And that you got to ask yourself, you know, are you a magician? I'm certainly not a magician because that's not my thing. I'm much more of a mystic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, I'm thinking about it and then it will happen and probably won't so fast, you know, but that's again, what Abby would say, the effort that you put behind it, that makes you into a magician. And there are obviously those other ways of bringing other spirits through then, you know, where, you know, all that sovereignty and all that spiritual hygiene, emotional hygiene, you know, energetic hygiene and all of that needs to be really considered when you go. But let's keep it simple like that. Yeah. Well, let me just add this because I was thinking about like, okay, these are going to go up to the galaxy, right? And I thought, well, maybe I should burn them once they go up there as a ceremonial type of thing. But then I was like, I'm a little attached to them. Like I really, <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little like, I kind of still like looking at them, you know? And think about putting them up on the fridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so let's look at this. Are you attached to them? Or you actually have a knowingness that they are not ready to be burned because you need to bring much more spirit through. You just drawn them. You just created a parameter. I Ah, oh, so just, a, you know, yeah. I mean, don't okay. Talk about a baby and then say after two days, you know, just off you go, have enough now. <laughs> you, know, the go up. you might want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little period of where you think yeah. to look after them. <laughs> think about yes. water like them. Yeah. Seeing, like seeing your period, drawings. You know, to even create a baby, it doesn't just take two seconds, right? La 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 done. No. That's where the yeah. mystic needs to be a bit real. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, la, 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 baby, done. Oh, no, it doesn't work that way. Oh, shit. And no. they, they have a fire a bit of magic. I'm, I'm wondering if there's more that's going to come out of you, and would that make a great coloring book? Ooh. Because as we're creating this galaxy from stardust right and and the plants are being created and and you know for me after our conversation last week and even during the conversation before the conversation happened i could see all of this swirling stardust and all all of the orbs and ball crystals that i have were saying to me put me in the windowsill for this galactic new year and they want to be like the planetary spiral. And I'll send a picture of that when it's, when it's done, but are re ready for, for viewing. But um, I see that as Amy's working with the celestial, the, the terrestrial creational energies, I see just like this book building and building and building about what, what it is that's being created. Oh, thank book you. Book created with a single drawing on lined paper. It's like starting to be created. Beginning. So, yeah. So can I new, add something new beginnings. here? New beginning. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. Can I add something to what Amy um, is putting forth and what all you guys are saying? Um, I don't know if you remember that one um, Earth Nouveau Hub session we had. Um, where there was uh, six of us and it was just Alfredo. Um, and we created, uh, we were talking about the star we created. Uh, it was um, Martina, myself, Amy, Jen, Robin, um, and Alfredo. And uh, after the, the show was finished, um, I came up with this uh, piece of uh, 
artwork that um, I imagine what um, the day uh, of that moment was. And this is bringing me back now um, that came to thought, this might have been the foundation of that new galaxy from that day. Hmm. With a single star. Yeah, I remember when you were, yeah. You remember that? It was back yeah, in Yeah, I June. do, yeah. And I think, I think we, I think we actually, wasn't that even part of our conversation that came up that day that we were starting and creating, you know, it's a foundation of a new galaxy? Of something. <laughs> we didn't know what it was. We didn't know what, what we were, what the day was, but uh, it was, it was, um, it felt like we were, it was a song, foundation of something that we were starting. Starting. Star. Star. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like today is one of those days too, to me. It's like a whole new, it's like, it's like sending out a whole new um, frequency vibration, which is like number and letters. You know, one represents numbers in the universe, one represents letters. So that grid, grid the X, Y, graph thing so it feels like we're actually setting up that type of a thing today to me at least i think that mm. that day was the initial the initial moment of that spark that we are going to build upon now so what if every single show we do is part of that first mm -hmm. yeah yeah and what if we're now hindsight, right? Thank you, Lana. Hindsight mm -hmm. is helping us to create foresight. Yeah, a lot of some of them are the skeletons and some of them are like the colorful skin. Mm -hmm. like... And then how many times have you voiced a goal? Forget about that kind of goal. No, forget just, you know, you gotta do something, you gotta, and you've voiced it to somebody else. And that has created an energetic um, wave to actually push through with it. And because I was, I was, I was talking to the guys, to the to the heads, you know, after the show or day after something, and um, and they said, "So how are you getting on?" I said, "Well, I voiced it. I brought it through my voice, heart voice connection, and." The signature frequencies on the show have heard it and everyone who without bodies has heard it and have everyone who will listen to it so the momentum is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because we have voiced it we started so it's like we created a parameter this is why we are using our voice uh doing the revocations because it's 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 exactly that it's, it's saying, I'm here, the genie, but I want to create something. This I want to create an experience. It's got to be voiced. It's got to be initiated. It's got to be actioned. So can a revocation also, I'm feeling like a revocation can also be a drawing. Yes, of course you can. You know, it's like without the words, without, you know, that. That's kind of cool because sometimes revocations... You know, I'll, I'll read somebody else's like Andrew's or yours or Laura's and they're not mine, but this is mine. These drawings are mine. Yeah. This is my revocation. Yeah. I would say I love that. It's an invocation. Oh, invocation. Yeah. Revocation that, meaning yeah. revocation meaning spoken. No, revocation more... means you're going to like uh, Tanya says, she works with the dragons to uncreate, to let go of shit. That's the revocation. We're revocating our participation in the crap. And the invocation is no, now we're creating. We're going to bring it up. We're going to bring it in. Uh, okay. Revoke yeah. versus invoke. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you invoke. Can draw a little apple falling on an ant. And there, there can be the revocation part of it. <laughs> so enfolding yeah. it versus. I understand that. <laughs> what do you mean? Sure. Release as opposed to create. Yeah, you, you little intricacies that you can put in. It's like things that you don't you don't want the ant in your creation anymore, and that apple is just gonna fall on it. It's gonna squish it, <laughs> take it out of take it out of the room. So, <laughs> Amy, I'll help. I don't understand. Amy, my thought about your drawing—if you want to uh, 
uh, replicate using your drawing, what you do is that you, you draw something in there and then you, you use your pencil and then you use the eraser and you erase it. So that's replicating it, mm -hmm. You're removing it, or you put a big X across it. Oh, why would I want to put an X? <laughs> that's revoking it. You're ending it. You're taking oh, it out of team. creation. Oh. Or, or as I said, you use your eraser and you erase it out of creation. So you're revoking it. Wait a when minute. When you're using pictures, when you're using your drawings. So you See, draw, you draw you something and then you put the little devil in it. Yeah. Because you don't yeah, read the of. devil. And then you say, fuck you, devil. I'm going to erase you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. With passion, you use a lot of passion, you know, and you race. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. I like it. Okay. All right. I like the little devil. All right. Yeah. Got it. Fun. As long as anything can become meaningful to you, that, that's what makes it a revocation and an invocation. So this Even is what they got their intricacies, but anything could be it if it's meaningful. Right, which this is meaningful. So it's an invocation, yeah. revocation. Yeah, something. No, no. revocation things coming in, things going out. Meaningful. I don't know why I'm having. Uh, look at create, uncreate, okay. revocation. Oh, like, like Tanya said, it's invoke, revoke. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. Um, I was going to say with that. Yeah, what else have we got with that? Is, 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 sorry, Robin, I think you wanted to say something at some stage. You still, oh, you um, could do the same thing with music, right? You bring the musical thing in. You create sure. the music for the galaxy. Well, and, you know, when I was doing Andrew's uh, program online, it was like, you know, very, very poorly done. He had, it was the first time he did it and changed it two or three times during the time I was doing it. So it was always changing. But one of the things I used to do is I would take myself saying it, and then as I drove somewhere, I'd be singing a revocation. I would just be making it up, and I would sometimes it was just music, and a lot of times it was words. But the whole time I'm driving and going by places, especially like banks and clocks and those types of things at the time, um, I would be singing. I would be making music, and um, it's. You know, so it, it was, I mean, that was a big part of my revocations was doing it with music. And a lot of times, even with my flutes or with the drumming, I would do the same thing, you know. So, um, yeah, you can, and you can do, um, you can do it just about any way that your imagination allows you to do it because you're, you're replacing one. You're replacing something that's holding you to something that's giving you freedom and allowing you to to expand and ex, you know create so you can dance it yes, yes. Lana, yeah. Lana Lana yeah. probably cook it I, I want to <laughs> add yeah. two bodily <laughs> images Make for it. revocation and invocation say again I want to add two bodily images for revocation and invocation yes so you can have your your red road ancestors and your blue road ancestors. So you have your new experiences as red blood, filled with imagery, leaving your heart, going out to see the world and experience things. And then it goes to return to the heart as an ancestor who is experienced and come back and return to the heart and let go, possibly let go and combine again with the, the new experiences to become something new again. And simultaneously, you have the, the chi, the energy in the air that's constantly coming into your lungs, combining with that blood process, circulating and having experiences until it returns and becomes an, um, a revocation when it leaves the body again. So right. both bodily functions of the revocation and the invocation. And now just add all that imagery to your blood. Your body. And, and to expand oh. that, Sean, since you're doing the bodily, you can do that also with the food that you're intaking exactly. and then what you're ex, ex, you know, expelling. And Absolutely. You, know, you know, and you can think of it as a way of reinforcing, uh, uh, healing, 
uh, revitalizing and then, you know, eliminating anything negative or anything that you might have carried or anything else that might have been, you know, pushed your weight. So you could also expand it in that manner too. The things coming in and the things going out. And then yes. we'll look at bloodline lineages and human DNA. So any, any experience that comes in that can't find remedy and resolve. So it's going to become stored. It's not going to exit the blood. It's not going to exit as chi through the, the lungs. It's going to be slowly stored into the bones, into the marrow matrix, physical matrix to be passed on to find resolution in the next life of the blood lineages to be find remedy and resolve later to the offspring. Mm. So just another scale of this kind of thing of the revocation and the invocation. I mean, and I mean, don't you think that, well, at least for me with, with my DNA lineage, it's like the buck stops here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm really, really aware of, of the DNA pattern clearing that I'm doing through my DNA ancestry, right? And uh, don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Taking what mm -hmm. worked and, and allowing that sustained energy, but releasing, you know, the old patterns and old fears and old programming that, that were bound in the DNA code. Yes, I don't generation have to after generation anymore. after generation. Right. I don't have to, I don't, I don't have to be the karmic holder for these right. past generations and the future generations. I don't no, need to be the bloodline holder. Mm -hmm. nor, nor holding curses, you know, or, you know, the family line has been cursed or some member in the family cursed another yeah. member of the family, you know, dissolving those so that no one else has to deal with them from here on, yeah. you know, and by doing that, then it also goes back to any of our times in existence and it helps them um, reinforce us to now too. So it works both ways. It helps us uh, here in this form. So I, I'm a strong believer of that, um, Tanya, of really, because the family lines, you know, especially the bloodlines, they've been those that have really been tainted in a lot of things. So I've been very conscious not to like, um, if I can, allow them to continue going. You know, I try to make it conscious and then use them to, to um, Use them to then set forth something positive or something that will help build, you know, and um, reinforce others, support them more. Well, and, uh, you know, and for me, like the awareness of the past lifetimes that I incarnated in my blood lineage yes. and to, to, you know, to experience reality in certain ways, right? Uh, and, and how that created um limitation in, in the ancestral line right and being able to clear that being able to have that you, you know knowledge and and say okay here i was responsible for x y and z and so now i'm going to uncreate that within my dna lineage right and yeah, then yeah. remembering we still can create bloodlines because we are dna human bodies so what are we empowering with our blood as part of our legacies now without all the old garbage that we want to pass on to our future generations. Maybe some cool dragons, you know, or like, you know, just, just so many unique things, stars and galaxies and brand new, beautiful ideas without all the ball and chains of mm. shit. What do you got, Jen? Hold it up. I had just come up off a video because when Tanya was talking about the, um, the swirling galaxy, he was Ooh. like, draw me now. So I just drew up the mascot. I was going to put it in the chat, and then Sean mentioned dragon. Yeah. Yeah, it, is, it looks and like a dragon, dragon talk. Yeah. Fantastic. The Very dragon beautiful. vortex. It's going yeah. in the coloring book, into the book. With it. Going, going up the tree, going up the tree, tree of life, our tree. You So I want to say that I agree with what you guys are saying about um, being aware of the ancestral karma. And now that we are more aware of what has happened um, in our um, ancestral line and in our history and um, 
we are aware now that we inherit karma from our ancestors. And having this awareness now gives us the opportunity to say uh, thus far and no further. We're going to end it here for our ancestral line and ourselves so that our um, children and our future generations don't have to deal with that anymore. We are in a perfect situation right now where um, we can resolve universal karma through us because we are boots on the ground. We have that right mm -hmm. now to do that. And I really like that because once ever something comes up for me, I try to do that and say no more. It's not going to continue on. This is where it ends. I have the opportunity here and now to do this for me and my soul family and my DNA lineage. Yeah, we're aware of our conscious choice. Yeah. And somebody said tree of life. So over here is Robin. Yeah. So I just want to weave that into Chinese medical issues. Please, please do because, um, you know, I, I continue on. But just to throw this in there, in the last week, I've seen the tree of life like in so many different perspectives and so many different values and, and colors and things. And, and uh, so it's, to me, it's like incorporate it more in your understanding. So go ahead, Sean. Okay, so just, there's a few concepts here, but think of like the, the solar cycle with our 28 vertebrae or 33 if you count the sacrum and then the lunar cycle on our front with our 12 ribs. But now, so you think of our blood lineages and our star lineages. So like our, our oxygen, our breath, that's kind of breathing in our star lineages and our blood lineages are just in, in our blood. So we, we breathe things in, it combines with our blood. And in Chinese medicine, it, the kidneys is what grabs it. So you have the heart fire and the, ethereal and hot and the kidneys is water and it solidifies everything and it combines your ancestors with your your material body your essence your thicknesses what makes you walk in the walls and stuff like that so but then the tree of life is kind of like your spine your spinal cord and your ribs which is in charge of taking that essence that's been combined with your star ancestral lineages and bringing it up the spine as your personality to distribute it to your different organs. So now it's taking your, your essence that's been combined with your ancestors and distributing it as a, as a, like a ladder. It kind of it kind of goes up and goes out like a tree and distributes it to your organs so you can generate, because each organ has a personality. Each organ has certain missions and dictives, dictatives that it wants to perform. And like, depending on which, which is going to a certain organ and more affecting your personality traits or whatever they are at this time with what you're trying to accomplish as a certain role. So it's kind of acts as a tree of life that brings things up, distributes it to uh, parts of your body. And in the Qigong and in the Reiki uh, lineage and stuff that I've studied, also each one of those organs is represented by a color, which gives it a, you know, another frequency of sound with, with the color wavelength too. So, um, you know, that would clear those colors that would enhance and revitalize those colors and actually create some of those new colors of the new dimension that Andrew was always talking about, you know. Absolutely, colors and, and the seasons. So yes. it's like, but sometimes people can be top heavy on certain seasons and empty in certain seasons. Like, you know, go, go, go. You're always spring. You're always liver. You're always growing, shooting up. But you, you never have that time for harvest in summertime where you rejoice and celebrate. Or you never take that break of wintertime. So it's these, these cosmic cycles. And we can kind of use our own intention now to distribute to where we want that, that ladder to go. Where do we want that essence to be distributed of ours? So now we're talking about the tree of life right, and the way it works in the body. So I just want to make a comment about the picture that I have up today. So this picture is uh, the Devil's Tower in the corner of Wyoming near South Dakota in the Black Hills. 
and it it its name in the Native American is Mega Zetonia Pietiopoli, which means celestial create portal of creation woman. And in the star knowledge group that I've worked with, um, there was a ceremony and meditations and camping and a lot of meditation with this, this being. And it's the base of a giant redwood tree, like a great grandmother celestial tree. And her roots go through all of the trees in the northern hemisphere here connected with the mycelium and so as we're talking about the tree of life right this this connection that we have also with with mother earth and the trees right it informs our body of of groundedness of connection to mother earth right if you sit up sit with your back up against a tree and just breathe, right? You can feel that energy connecting with your spinal cord, connecting with the roots going down into the earth, right? And so as we work in our own bodies, in our own creation, right, and have that awareness that Sean was talking about, right, of, of what we're working with, what we're creating, but also how we're, we're working with Mother Earth and and our contracts with her, and how you know we're we're co-creating with every step we take on Mother Earth. So. You know, uh, Tanya, when you um, the tree roots, and um, you know, everywhere I was being led for twenty years, I would always sing and chant and pray to the trees, and I would always get information back from them. And what I learned is that when you have a connection with them and you support them in any way whatsoever, their root system communicates that out across the world. And you actually are helping that whole society of, of trees. And um, they really appreciate any human that takes the time to acknowledge them or give them thanks or help them in any way. So, um, you know, I used to love in, in the early morning or late evening, go out and sit along the tree line and play my flute to the trees. And I would ask, you know, what ceremonies they could share with me. And I've gotten some brilliant stuff through through communicating with the trees and setting with them. So, um, Tanya, that's a, all these things are wonderful things to put out there for anybody else coming coming and, and joining us at some point in time because these are all going to be connected some, somewhere out solidify that new that new freedom based existence that we're walking into. Alfredo, do you want to say something? Yes. Um Hold up. I have to I have to keep an eye on Malik at the same time. So I kind of half focus, but half not. Um, he, he's able to find water no matter where we go. It's so ridiculous. It's, it's freaking water seeking senses. Or, no. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, like I was going to say, because like I've been working with the trees for a while and I was like, like, yeah, you go to the tree to ground. But, you know, grounding with the tree is it's not only grounding, but I notice over like in my past years, I'll be like, oh, I'm going to meditate all day. I'm not going to have any thoughts. I'm just going to be with the land all day. I notice, like, I, I can't even do that anymore because, like, being in a tree, I notice at, like, the one-hour mark, like, sitting with the tree and grounding, whatever, you feel very grounded and your body relaxes, nervous system calms down. But after, like, one hour, there's something that happens. It's not only grounding, but it's also very energizing because at that one-hour mark, I start to get kind of antsy. I was like, oh, I got to get up and move because... It, it just won't let me, I can't like comfortably keep sitting there beyond an hour because it, it's just like, all right, you got your energy, go out there and create, do these things and, you know, whatever your intentions are. And I'll just say that because I got to, <laughs> I got to get my look. Just imagine, Alfredo, that it's your tank being filled up and it can only hold so much at this point in time. When you're, when you're giving Reiki to a small child or an animal, you know, they only take a few seconds or a couple of minutes. And when they start squirming, they've had enough. Their system is full. And one of the healing modalities that I actually was taught 
was that you can only, for each combination of points that you do, you can only do it for five minutes because at that point, the body cannot hold anymore and it's just a waste of time. So just think of it that your tank is filled and it's a good thing and now you're ready to go off and do whatever you can with it, you know? So Tanya, um, I was I was wondering about the picture in the background, and you confirm <laughs> what I was thinking. But um, do you have any concept of how old that tree might have might be? No, I'm sure Andrew would know. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> yeah, um, old yeah. and allowed itself to be cut down <clears throat> to, to, did you ever read the book, The Giving Tree? No. Right. So The Giving Tree, it's a shell, uh, sh 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 Sheldon, it's a, Silver? Sil Silver. yeah, Silverstein, Shel Silverstein, it, it's a ch children's poet. He wrote this book called The Giving Tree. And there's a, a little boy who goes to the tree and takes fruit from the tree and thanks the tree and then takes wood from the tree, you know, and over the course of his life, basically he takes the whole tree, cuts down the tree to use the wood to build something. And um, at the end, he uses the stump of the tree to, to, sit, to sit and rest. And so it's this energy of the tree giving and giving and always giving. And mm -hmm. so this is also the energy of, of this giant, ancient, petrified redwood tree that she was always giving and still is. You know, her spirit is still is, still yeah. is giving. Cool. Um, it is a really a big tree. Um, I can't imagine how tall it must have been. Yeah, there's some fun stories about the modern history of it. And actually, it was Teddy Roosevelt who made this a national monument and a protected monument. So. I just want to link this in with the conversation that we had earlier, the giving tree. Yeah, the giving and the giving and the giving by changing the parameters of the tree, by losing its original identity as a tree, it keeps giving. And this very much falls into what we're doing, which again, you know, is it excitement or is it fear? It depends how we look at it, because by allowing ourselves to lose our identity and re outcreate ourselves, reconstruct ourselves, change our parameters, we are the giving tree. It's only when we say, no, I'm a tree. Do not <laughs> cut me. Do not do this. Yeah? No, because that's the thing. It's that out creating, letting ourselves be that. Losing our identity like Jen says on a daily basis. I'm a diff. Look at Jen today. I'm sorry. I don't know what you did, but something happened with your energy. Completely different energy. Yeah, very agree. agree. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a completely different woman. Yeah, you can, maybe it's because yeah. she's in a different space. The home. <laughs> yeah. 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 Are you at home? That is interesting, but that is actually quite interesting. How do you have to, or how do you change yourself? in the work environment the identity of jane in the work environment is very different which is normal yeah but it's quite interesting how completely different i am perceiving we all are perceiving it there is this tremendous softness this glow around her right maybe she's in more in her divine feminine energy that's what i'm perceiving <laughs> now, i'm gonna put a challenge to you jen Next time you're broadcasting from your office, show us the divine feminine. Just for fun, because we can. Because uh, the, the, the perception that you're projecting out is completely different. Right? Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, interesting. Now that's identity. Change, this, lose, that. And you know, when we lose something, we're never losing it. So let me let me use this because I've got another tool here, right? I just want to say one one thing yeah. quick about the trees because we were talking last week about which kind of tree would we be? Yeah. Right. And so now as as we're looking at at the the grandmother tree the celestial portal of creation and how she's transformed. It's like Martina was the palm tree that transformed into the rainbow, right? So how are we all, you know, doing that transformation for ourselves and for the world? Okay. I think I was a weeping willow as, a, you know, in my younger days, that's how I saw myself. Now I see myself more as an oak or something like that. But I used to love the weeping willow. I loved the, the hanging branches and the strength and hiding in them. and. They just, they, I just love them, the, the, the flowing branches and, you know, it was just, I don't know, it was a wonderful thing to play with, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as I think, yeah, I think I change every day of what tree I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm this and tomorrow I'm that. Like but, creating uh, new, creating yeah. new every day. But what I'm thinking as I'm looking at the picture behind you, Tanya, is that, um, but that tree is still in our reality now she's still giving and giving and giving um how many um maybe a couple millions of years old and we are actually talking about her right now and remember she was in that movie i think was it called contact close no, encounters uh, of the close, third kind close encounters of the third kind yes um so she was even a movie star <laughs> in our current reality. <laughs> so she never stopped it's, giving. She's isn't still it there. strange that now we call her devil's power instead of, you know, and, and nobody will mention the fact that she's, you know, a petrified tree. Go ahead, Martina. Can I point out something? Over uh tanya's left shoulder do you see the guy who's been with us this whole time in the mountain do you see his little triangle head and his two eyes and his nose <laughs> from our galaxy i yes. can't show you no, yes. yeah 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 you i get the face do you yeah, see the yeah, face yeah. yes i yeah. see him yeah and like here yes yes do you see it i see right there He's been with us well, today. actually, what are you looking at at the, at the mountainside? I'm looking at the cloud. I yeah, see, right there. I see a triangle Tanya. facing the cloud. Where Tanya's circling. There's no wearing sunglasses. Yeah. Sunglasses. Uh -huh. <laughs> nose. Okay. Is a little triangle. Double, double okay. mohawk. Yeah, yeah, double mohawk. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Do you guys see the face in the cloud? The two eyes, the triangular face in the cloud over her, the devil's tower. Yep, right there. Uh huh. You see that? Actually, eye? what I see is I see like this going on. I see the two eyes and a triangular face. Don't no. see it. Yeah. You can't unsee the other one now. I like, can't unsee it. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, can't I can also see on the other side, there is the, the, the devil's tower is actually a That's hat. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Hat, you see that the little nose here, yeah, like going oh. onto the grass, and then we got those two eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It also I reminds me of the top of a squash or a pumpkin or a board or something, too, where the tree is like the yeah, yeah, the, the stem like of the, the pumpkin, pumpkin right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. But yeah. I actually, I actually see two faces on the on the side of the ridge there. Yeah, that's yeah, it's like it's like a gallery of people. It's like a yeah. gallery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a peanut gallery. They're laughing at us. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Who needs Mount Rushmore when you got the yeah. Devil's Tower? So like having a laugh. How long did it take you guys to figure that out that we've been here? <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching you the whole time. Uh-huh. What's that? Uh -huh. I see ya. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. So now they're all happy. They got recognized. <laughs> they're part of the today's show.
And uh, Martine, I have to ask who that face is behind you. I, we see her, but she's turned to the side. Oh, that's the Joker. Oh, that's the Joker. That's Joker. Oh. Bobblehead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he looked like he didn't want to be with us today. He was like at the side. <laughs> 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 so so let me bring this in since i've been holding it for for half an hour now <laughs> so about five five different things that came up and i've lost all of it now <laughs> all of it look but, in your box <laughs> what is it it's wood <laughs> so it's a candle yeah it's got okay. a lot of little oh i see yeah it's in a bamboo it reminds me of a skateboard yeah so it's, it's a candle so i'm i think when i when uh sean started talking about the bloodline and i thought hmm yeah that's a bloodline right our linearity kind of thing. now devil's peak first is it it's called devil's peak devil three tower tower devil tower so we, I don't know who said it now, but the devil tower has been, oh, Lana, has been standing there for God knows how long. Millions of years. Has been out creating itself. Now the reminder for us is we are all that. We've been doing this for millions of years, out creating ourselves. And we keep coming back. So we are that devil, that tree as well. Now, bloodline let's look at that and yeah the, it implies a linearity which is okay because you know every time we go tangible we 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 play with linearity now as, as i said I, I can't remember what was going, where i was going with all of this but this just reminds me of if this is the bloodline and then all these little what do you call this uh, thing Whips. Whips. Yeah. Uh, these are all our different soul shots or you can say this is a, these are all our different lives, right? It's all coming together. So if we have a situation and we're going to burn the one in the middle and it's going to start flooding all the others, you know, they're not getting a chance to actually get burned as well, right? Because this is when we start, you know, it's almost like it reminds me of a soul shard integration. I don't want to look at it as different life, but it is actually different lifetimes, you know, stuck, stuck, stuck. Now, what we want to do, we want to start in order to really get our, to heal our bloodline. We can start burning all of them at the same time, inviting mm. all of them. And then just think, all burning at the same time. Because that's, that's exactly how we think about it in Chinese medicine. The heart is fire. The kidneys are water. And the fire of the heart is the thinnest. It's the most ethereal. And the kidneys essence is the, like the wax is the most dense. It's the hardest. But the heat warms up that dense wax and mm. makes it alive kind of thing. Like just, just like that diagram. Oh, that's so cool. And if you, we were talking about we are being the ones in the bloodline that, you know, is, start, yeah, this is what I was actually getting at exactly. So we are being the ones that is healing, that are healing the bloodline. So, yeah. You're, as, yeah. So let's say you're, you're, we're here at the end. Yeah. The ones that finally decided to heal the bloodline. Now we start burning this one and all the others kind of say, oh, what's going on over there? What's this fire? You know, oh, we can do this too. And then they all follow suit and we're going to integrate and bring them in. And at the same time, look, it's one piece. It's one piece. That's the oneness. So we're talking, we, we, we must never forget, you know, when we talk, we, we're clearing the bloodline. It's us. Every single one of us is us again. The whole thing. John, you, you got excited. You wanted to say something there. Just that. It's just like, like our essence. And instead of just using a little piece at a time, lighting up little flames here and there, it's just allowing it all to be on mm. all together. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of reminds me of uh, going into that dream state lately. And, you know, and I don't know about you guys, but lots of times I'll see many things before I get into a dream. And so what I've been doing is I've been acknowledging 
that that's another time and place that I'm exact that I'm at. And sometimes if I didn't really like the way it looked, I said, oh, we're going to jump this one and go to the next one. So I've actually been taking the initiative to acknowledge them and to actually then, you know, choose to either stay or go on with it. So, um, you know, that's for me, you know, because I tried to fight the dreams since my mid thirties for so long, because I used all this stuff about kind of feel, I used to dream about that stuff. And I'm telling you, if you can't do anything about it, you'd say, why do you keep showing me? So um, now to be able to step back into it and say, oh, well, oh, I'm time hopping. I'm timeline hopping or I'm, you know, or okay, we're going to skip this one or, you know, I've been trying to use that time and those snippets of things to, to empower and to, to kind of maybe uh, steer where, where I'm going or what's, what I'm allowing to come into me maybe is a better way to say it. Well, and that's pure mastery. That's going beyond 3D, beyond complaining about what the hell's going on here and just really taking control, taking the control back. The control that we've always had. It's not about being controlling or anything. No, it's saying, I'm going to take it back. And once you've taken it back, it's not going to be used to control anything. It's going to be used to create. Because oh, I get it's, shivers on that one. <laughs> it's pure creator energy. It's pure creator energy. Energy is energy that's been harvested from you through us. No blame, shame, guilt thingy. We've done it to our we've done it to ourselves. It's that soul, soul shard competition hierarchy and all of that. I, I used to get my ass kicked in dreams. Like oh, I, I'd be fist fighting people and it'd be like, I know I can take this guy, but all my punches would be weak. They would we wouldn't affect them and then they just mash me out. But just just recently I had a dream and I was in a tournament. And I just, I fought four people at one time and I just licked the floor with them. It was just like, I was so powerful. It was awesome. <laughs> and then, and then what's kind of funny after Andrew had that one, um, talking about the fake police officers, oh, there, was yeah. a, there was this fake police officer in this weird motorbike thing from the future. And he tried to give me a ticket and I'm like, you're not a real cop, man. And he's like, Yes, I will. You will have, like, you're going to be arrested. If you, you're not even real. <laughs> like, and I just walked away from him and he just, like, followed me on his weird little cop bike thing. <laughs> and it's like, fuck off. <laughs> I'm not paying you any money. You're not, you're not a real cop, douche. Did you find, Sean, that that, <laughs> stuff, that kind of dream started coming up at a certain time period or that your dreams changed into that kind? Just over time. Like, like just over, like, like I've been getting into the Andrew material since like 2019 or maybe 18. And it like, there was none of it before. It just, you know, it's just slowly cultivating with intention yeah, over time. At about that time, when I went to Andrew, I, I realized that my dreams were all like, I was always like being watched or being something was, and I was like always trying to move away from them, escape away from them, that they were trying to block my way. And so it was very different from all of my dreams previous. So I just wondered, you know. But I'm, I'm not out of the ballpark yet because there's still like a lot of machine gun dreams and gunfight <laughs> dreams and being taken, like it's like, Ugh, you know, but it's like just little by little. So you have a lot of lice and during wars and stuff. Yeah, all sorts of places. Yeah, but those are action gadgets and there's nothing wrong with action gadgets when you are on a, on a journey to take your power back. You've got to do it somehow. It doesn't really matter. But I mean, yeah, I just like want to be more mind. lucid. Mm. Like, like I don't want to be like in it. I want to be like at least controlling it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, and sometimes I am, but it's like, it just sucks being in a gunfight when you're like, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. oh, shit. Yeah. Now <laughs> I can. I had used to have a lot of dreams of being like chased, pursued, where I had to run and hide and now I can they don't show up really very often anymore but now if it starts I can take those people and I can say no nope, you sit over there and I can you know put them to be sitting somewhere or say no I'm not going to I'm not participating 
in this anymore. Yeah, Beauty. I've noticed. I've noticed in the last couple of years that I haven't that I haven't been you know plagued with that. So, um, but this last few years, I've been doing exactly what you're saying. You know, or trying to incorporate that more. So, I, I think what we say and what we claim is shown to us in our in our dream time. Uh, you know how effective we're we are, or how much we're giving up, or how much we're just kind of like being and letting life, you know, act on us. So um, these are great tools for other people to now take into their own own dream times. You know, you can also transform the guns into flowers. That's what <laughs> I was thinking. Give them, give them psychic powers. Give them <laughs> like superhero powers. You know, That's this gun is no longer a gun. It's a and, uh, yeah, you know. because of the, the, there's like intention and awareness, but now it's just like all that intent, like all the awareness and then the intention is now just certainly starting to build up. Like now in my dreams, at least in like sleeping dreams, it's more, I am starting to have that cognitive ability a little bit. So it's, but sometimes it's like haven't quite built up that ability yet, but that's definitely going to be like part of the intention. Just flower it, it's definitely a, it's definitely a building process you know it, it's something that because we're trained because our dream time we're being told all of our lives that it's this other thing and it's you know not reality and it's you know yeah 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 you know and, and they want us not to know the power of it of being aware and acting being you know making our own choices in that kind so uh, it the, does. It is a process, Sean. The victories oh, are so cool. Like oh, when you man. achieve something that you've never done before, it's like, ooh. And then this, this is. It's always easier after that too. I like the distinction that you made, Sean, too. Like your sleeping dreams, because sometimes I become aware of a dream going on in the background while I'm awake, while yes. I'm working on something, especially if I'm kind of checked out, like drawing or something. So. Yeah. You can dream well, awake too. I kind of just equate dreams to attention and mm -hmm. focus. Like it's just focusing. Can you focus on it? Like it just concentrates everything. And, you know, it could be the sleep dream. Because you know, we're dreaming right now. We're just a bunch of dreamers who are really practiced at focusing our intention. Or not intention, our attention. Like mm -hmm. our intention too. But we, we've concentrated our attention it made it real and we're really good at it. We're so good at it that we forgot what we're doing it. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think the picture that I keep seeing a lot lately and thinking that Sean is the movie Avatar where he goes into the, the sleep mode, you know, uh, tank and then he's able to jump into the Avatar. And I think that's really kind of portrayal of what we do when, we, when we're, you know, awake we're kind of jumping into that avatar and i think when we're asleep then we're more aware of our bigger self but mine but, minus the magician and as the mysticist like we, we don't need the tool of the machine that like we put on our yeah, head yeah. and sucks it. it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we can just do right. it innately right exactly it was just a, just an example it's of cool. how yeah uh, you know yeah I, well, I just wanted to play with a martinez mysticism and magician terms absolutely so i wanted to sh say something uh sean um because i have this funny image in front of me as you were talking about your dreams and how you're having all these um fighting dreams with guns and stuff like that <laughs> or whatever but I, I i saw this like the guns the bullets that are coming out from the gun and you're talking about the flowers and i saw them transform into um uh, the bullets transform into these pollens that are going out like the bullets would go out and then they would infect or affect whomever it's being uh, intended to go to and become an allergic reaction to them. You know, like when you inhale the pollen and you get allergic reactions. So <laughs> I, I saw that the pollens being, uh, you know, transformed in that manner <laughs> and it was just going out there doing a I, thing in your defense <laughs> i like this because now i have all your guys intentions too all your healing intentions with all these bullets turning into <laughs> seeds <laughs> and flowers <laughs> but do you do you remember your dreams quite easily now every night there's different varying of like how long 
and how many segments? Like, can I remember one segment? Can I remember two segments? Can I remember five or six or seven? And it's like usually every time at least one. And it depends. And the lengths vary as well. But I can pull out a principle or two every evening. Because talking about dream, uh, awake dreams and sleep dreams, as long as you can remember them, even if you are awake, you can ch still change them. So you don't have to necessarily lucidly dream do it all together at the same time, but you wake up and you think, oh, I didn't do this right. Oh, I put them in the flowers. Actually, I should have put them into ice creams. So just change it. Yeah. And yeah, that, think still about it. <laughs> that still works. I've done this a lot. Because that's you know, a good call. I'm, when it's I wake up, I'm not feeling great enough about this dream. I'm like, hang on a second. I didn't like this. Let's change it. And you can speak it out loud. Of course, that helps because that ch changes the reality or you can even write it down. So now yeah, the bullets play, play turn it into, play it out. The bullets turn into rainbow sprinkles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said that Skittles. <laughs> that too. Taste the dreams. Yeah. <laughs> 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 At the end of the day this is what's going to happen the dream the, the dream dream and the awake reality starting to mix up so this is a good practice my next step i really want there's so often i'm being taught in my dream time and so much it is like chinese medicine and just books on herbs and books on this and different ideologies and philosophies and those are the hardest to hold on to because it's like you can pull the principles, but you just can't. Well, you can't. It, it, the next step for me is I just want to be able to pull all that information and keep it all. Because that would be nice. Can you download so you, it? Download yeah. it. Yeah. That's the next step. Like goal. into your, into your. Yeah. I think it's almost like. And maybe I'll play it out like Martina said. Draw so like, pictures. As soon as I wake up. Just kind of transform see. that with some imagery. So yeah. know that you have already downloaded it. It's in your mm -hmm. field. The only thing you mm. need to do is locate it. And the best way is, is uh, just write and let, let whatever comes out and don't think. Yeah, my first book I wrote like that. It, like, and that's it. It's, it's a process because I can feel it. Like I can feel all these things inside of me now, like as, as a knowingness. I don't know what to do with it or how to turn it into physical senses, but it's in there. It's it definitely can, part of the yeah. synchronicities or the unfolding of things. Mm -hmm. I can tell, Sean. I can tell just as long as you've been on here, the change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The change that you're like this confidence, this like, I know it. Yeah. I know the it. School. It's in there. From the first it's time good. or two that we spoke. Yeah. The yeah. Change. Like, good part of like the, um, the limitations but in a good side like the chinese medicine has been like bringing spirituality into western medicine in an untractable form or unretractable I, I don't know what the terminology is but it's like making its way into my belief system in a way that can't be taken out because it's so it's like it's like a wild vine that just is, it's it's part into everything now and that's what's so cool it's just kind of entwined in everything and so now you can't pull it out without turning the whole show off and it's not coming off <laughs> yeah how about I, if it's connecting to all those parts that were already seated and just waking them up and then that's the dealio because it's just but it's taking the senses that i already had it's taking my belief systems that i already had and it's waking them up by attaching them to them so now i can't like the the nervous systems can't say Hey, don't look at that because they're they're attached now. You can't see one without the other. You can't look at Devil's Tower without seeing the guy in the sunglasses. <laughs> like, look at them. <laughs> so you could try something. As you're speaking, I'm thinking of of, of something. Uh, you could give it a symbolism. It's give it a symbol. And then whatever that symbol is really look at the the symbol in this reality what what are the qualities of that symbol 
and then interpret it through the symbolism that your subconscious has thrown up because there's a lot of the downloads they're all lots of them especially when you're a creative person you um download everything in symbolisms mm -hmm. and then just yeah. literally look at the symbolism so i do this with pain for instance what what does the pain look like and then say okay well it looks like a chain and okay so what what is what is it made of what is it attached to that kind of thing so find the symbolism for it and then what is that symbol what do you know about it in this reality and how is that going to lead you back into what you're trying to figure out yeah so yeah 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 using the the magician's medium for a while to give all the imagery and give the objects Again. significance Did until you, it becomes the mysticism so it comes down and of course the other way is to have a communication with it as you give it a parameter you define it and then you can have a conversation with it you ask it question the symbol you ask the symbol questions and allow the, the symbol to to answer you to to reply i've been dreaming in songs lately <laughs> so if any other dream besides like the song and i'll bring that like into my awareness in the morning and that's what my brain's doing. That's what I'm processing. Fabulous. I'm trying to assign something to it, yeah. Fabulous. I, I think these, these images and the knowledge that you're bringing in, Sean, it's almost like learning the rules so you can learn how to break them, mm -hmm. right? Because as, as the Chinese medicine was created in the operating system that we're moving out of, it's like now as we're as we're moving into this new way of creating how is the body changing and how are we expanding upon those those uh old systems right how are they becoming new how are they becoming expanded how how is the human body you, you know growing in its own multi-dimensional blueprint and how the way the energetics are are working in the physical body but also the energetic body right because there's there's so much more there that we don't that hasn't been documented yeah yeah just opening up our senses to it because they don't know how to make heads or tails of them yet yeah and sean i hear to turn it around in your dream that you're actually the teacher not the student and when you embody that you're the teacher, you'll realize that you have that knowledge that you're trying to retain. Wicked. Yeah, just flip it around a little bit. Everything is the opposite what it appears. <laughs> Nothing is the opposite what it This is such a good tool now for mm -hmm. us because we have inverted the matrix. Mm. We need to in look at every single thing, absolutely. And then there's a there's a quote from a an old book that my mind just kept wanting to say, and then it's like um, the death isn't really the de or death or the aging process isn't really the depletion of the essences, but it's more a constant fixation on one surroundings. So it's the constant fixation that causes the death process. Unable to open up the senses anymore, if you just become a closed circuit and nothing's coming in anymore that's new and fresh. So we no. even start a new, new, new fresh one. The limitation causing the death. Yeah, I like that. I really the fi like that. A fixation of the senses. Fixation. You can only focus on what your known world is. And with nothing new coming in, that known world becomes a finite world. Hmm. And then we got, and like, you know, who wants to die? Like, I know we don't have to be afraid of dying, but you know, I plan to live for a very, very long time and to have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I don't want to start from scratch. I don't like, cause I think we got a really good foundation here, everybody. What do you think? Yeah. 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 The recycling <laughs> rather than I, I know that all you young bloods help me, you know, because you know, when you get to my age, uh, you know, sometimes you start thinking, 
am I am I getting stagnant? Am I just you know in this rut? And what am I living for if it's in a rut? So I understand immediately just in the last couple of weeks what you're saying, Sean, and and how it really could bring you to draw this segment to a close to start a new one. And remembering at the same time that nothing ever gets concluded and closed anyway, it's still running. Great, exactly. An open circuit. Yes. Simultaneously on top of each other. So yeah. as Sean said, intention and attention. No, intention and attention. And Focus. retention. And retention. <laughs> and really? a we, we think of the spleen as the organ that focuses and intends on everything. So it's that process of constantly maintaining focus. So when you like, you've been focusing on things for way too long, way too hard, and it becomes weakened, can't transform the food, you start to poorly digest. Yes. So like poor digestion is that somatic analogy to not being able to transform or just being stagnant in your just constantly intending on the same thing over and over again. Excellent, yeah. I like that. I will focus creating spleen deficiency, I like that. Yeah, I can't transform. Just whatever it is. Balance. And then that leads to your gut being sluggish and then that interferes with the dream ability. And so, yeah, it's a big, big, Clusterfuck. Yeah, it's a big clusterfuck. That's that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> because then we say like the spleen has another function, which is like banking the blood. So it's kind of if that spleen gets bogged down, you can't like banking your blood is in essence like banking your experience, using your memory, your mind of memories. It's what as soon as you go to pick up this water bottle, all the blood starts going to your muscles to do it and when it could be like slows down and you can't intend that subconsciously is everything starts getting slow and foggy and blah, 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 blah. and and i i would assume too as 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 we're going through that type of thing the outside light even magnifies it even more so you know we bring it we bring more experiences of that into our everyday life too when we when our physical body is is going through that so makes it doubling, doubling down. Mm. Fabulous guys. So as I said in the beginning, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be away for the next two, three weeks, something like this. Um, the offer is out there for anyone who wants to open up the Zoom, keep the same time. So everyone, you keep that routine going um record it if you can and then just throw it into the the hub or just do your own thing you don't really need me anyway you know and <laughs> take it from there we take it from there and then you know we can carry on doing that it doesn't mean that i have to do it all the time you know what i mean so it's really i mean um if you have as we said if you have uh, a paid version of the zoom then you have no limitations if you don't have a paid you have a limitation of 40 minutes but that might be cool too yeah yeah just don't break the routine it's quite nice to keep doing it and mm -hmm. well, yeah in a 40 minute period might you know some people might be more willing to tap in later and listen to it too if it's only 40 minutes versus you know two hours so that's also another possibility of, of, of uh, being available to people or them making themselves, uh, you know, open to but listening. It, they would obviously be missing out because every single minute <laughs> that we're spending together is magical. magical. I know that most of them I've got to listen to where I haven't been here, I enjoyed or gotten something from. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I let's, have, yeah, go, go. I have go. a paid subscription to Zoom, so if y'all want to connect i'd be happy to send a link fabulous well, you and tanya both have, uh, have the paid one Fantastic. how much does it cost can i ask how much does it cost for the paid one it's less than 20 dollars a month like 15 16 dollars 
Okay. Yeah, I pay for the year, so I think it was 149 or something like that. Okay, because I then that's one of my to do list and I hadn't done yet. So thank you. All this information about it, I appreciate it. Fabulous. Well, that was actually fantastic. As usual, we had no fantastic. So thanks for coming up, everyone, and for showing up and for contributing. And um, I'm going to love and leave you for the next couple of weeks. And then I will be back too. Some Have a fabulous time. Yeah. Nice Have to see everyone time. today. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah, enjoy your trip, Martina. Bye. We'll do. Thanks, guys. Hey? And the recording is going to go out. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.